Sean Devaney of the Sporting News, longtime NBA writer, as we are down the stretch of the NBA season. So many great storylines. It kicked off last night with Pete Thompson, Washington beating Cleveland, Philadelphia winning, which means Philly currently is just two and a half games behind the Cavaliers for the number three spot in the Eastern Conference. At the beginning of this year, I said the ceiling for the Sixers would be the three seed, but Sean Devaney, do we really think the Cavaliers will keep pace and allow teams to be in contention? Is the three spot in the East up for grabs? Well, I think it absolutely is. You know, I mean, the Cavaliers uh, at this point have so many question marks and unknowns. Uh, they certainly looked good in their first two games since making the trade. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, last night was a different story. And, and I think you saw, I mean, I, I, toward the end of that game, uh, there was a three-pointer on the wing by Rodney Hood. And I think he hit the side of the backboard. And, and you know, it, it, it just kind of is, it serves as a reminder that this is a very inexperienced bunch of guys that they brought in. I, I think it's a good move that they did. I think what they did uh, was something that they had to do given where they were. Uh, but, you know, we, we don't know what to expect from them. Uh, these are guys who have not played in, in, in all that many high-pressure situations. So I'd say it's, uh, uh, it's up for grabs. Yeah, and I know that uh, a lot of people before the All-Star break, they had won those two games, and everybody kind of thought, okay, Cleveland's back on track. This team looks a lot better. Uh, but at this point right now, it seems that Toronto and Boston, it's a two-team race for the top two spots, but – is Cleveland closer to the back of the pack or closer to the top of the field? You know, like I said, we, I, I just don't know. I, I, you know, the, we, the, the guys that they brought, you know, Rodney Hood's 25, Clarkson is 25, Larry Nance is, is 25. Uh, Nance and Clarkson have never been in a playoff game in their NBA careers. George Hill obviously has a lot more experience. Uh, uh, he's the fourth guy that they brought in. But, you know, that's, that's an inexperienced group. So we don't know if they're going to be able to withstand some of the pressure. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing uh, uh, to go out and, and, and come out with sort of that burst of energy that a lot of teams get after a trade. Uh, but, you know, what, what happens when you really got to knuckle down and, and, and do the X's and O's and, and, and you start facing some teams that are, uh, that, that, that are playing better, that are, that, that are a little more up than, than say, Boston was when, uh, when, when Cleveland went there uh, a couple weeks ago. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I think talent-wise, I think uh, the Cavaliers have enough to do it to hold on to that number three. Uh, I think LeBron is going to be pretty determined uh, to do that. I don't think he wants to, uh, uh, you know, lose that face a little bit by, by slipping all the way down to number four. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I don't know that necessarily they can uh, just flip a switch because we don't know if these guys have that switch. And just one other thing, don't forget, LeBron's played every game. And he's playing 37 minutes a game right now. They're going to have to get him some rest at some point down the stretch. So they're going to probably wind up giving away some games because of that. Uh, Sean Devaney, NBA writer from the Sporting News here on the Sports Bash Live. Yeah, and and that's one thing with Philly, that uh, they've got the easiest schedule in the league. But, man, it is crunched in. they got 26 games in about a month and a half here. They're playing uh, Saturday, Sunday. They played last night. They're almost playing every other night. And you talk about teams that want to shorten their bench right now. We know the situation with Joel Embiid. We have no idea how much he's going to play down the stretch. But um, when you look at Philly and that schedule they have, what do you think the ceiling is for them? Yeah, well, I mean, I you know, I think, that, like you said, I, I, there's no reason they can't win that number three seed. Um, you know, you're going to get into a situation where where teams, uh, some teams along the line, whether they admit it or not, are not exactly trying to win. They they, they might be tanking just a bit. Uh, so you know, you're going to have some some benefits of that, and 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 I'm sure that uh, uh, that 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 the coaching staff has some of that worked out in terms of okay, you know, what's a, what's a good good time to, uh, to to take the foot off the gas? You know, a team that we can beat without our best. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, this, that's that's going to be have to be part of the planning. But uh, you know, I mean, I think that this is a team that uh, you know has, has has gotten better as the season's gone on. Uh, whereas I think if you look at much of the East, there's not a lot of teams you can say that about. You know, whether it's uh, on the bottom like Detroit uh, or at the top like Boston, I, there's not a lot of teams in the East that have gotten better uh, as the season has gone on. I think Philadelphia is one. I think that they're uh, they're, they're primed to take take advantage of that.
Sean, you talk about teams not exactly trying to win. How about uh, Mark Cuban's comments, and will the NBA have to look further into this? I mean, they tried in the offseason to tweak the draft, but you've got seven teams with 18 wins, and then Cuban telling his team uh, it's okay to lose. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that there's much that the, that the league can do about it. You know, I, I really don't. Uh, you know, I think the thing that they addressed or, or were trying to address uh, was more, you know, the the Sixers Sam Hinky plan uh, of of you know sort of a, a an extended period of losing. I don't think it can do anything though about uh, you know a team that, that that gets to the middle of January realizes uh, that they're too far back and and uh, not going anywhere and decides to sort of pack it in for the rest of the uh, year in order to a prevent injuries and then b you know also of course to uh, improve draft spots. So uh, I, I just don't know that there's anything that can be done about that, that, that short-term tanking. Uh, you know, you, you can tinker with the lottery all you want. I don't know that it's really going to make that much of a difference. Of course, that was one team. Now it looks like multiple teams are doing it. Right, right. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, look, if you're, if you're Orlando or Atlanta, why wouldn't you? I mean, uh, you know, even, even though they've, they've, they've tweaked the odds so that it's not that much more of an advantage, it's still a few more ping pong. But, and, you know, at that point, what else have you got to play? What's the point in trying to win, uh, you know, 26 games rather than 24? I mean, there's just no no, no point for a team like that. Uh, Sean Devaney's with us here. Yeah, um, we have people, you know, obviously it happened here for multiple years, so it's a very hot topic in this uh, neck of the woods. But now that the Sixers are kind of past that, um, you know, people are saying, look, this is ruining the game, the fabric of the game. Um, so I, I – I don't know what the NBA can do about it. I suggest that, you know, hey, the team that finishes ninth, give them the most ping pong balls. The team that finishes 10th, they get the next, you know, reward these teams for trying to move up the standings instead of last night, Lopez, coach's decision, did not play. Any reason why? Just uh, didn't feel like winning tonight. I mean, it's a bad look for the league and the fans. But I think fans, they get it. It's just now you're basically saying, yeah, I understand what you're doing, but now I'm saying I'm devaluing the whole the whole fabric of the game. I, I agree with what the guy texted in earlier. Yeah, and uh, if you're one of the twenty thousand people who bought, uh, you know, bought tickets to the game, and then probably, you know, if you've got them on the secondary market or whatever, you probably paid a couple hundred bucks for two tickets. Uh, you know that, yeah, that's that, that that feels like I just got robbed. You know, so uh, so yeah, there's 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 definitely issues there, and 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 the league knows it. Uh, I don't know that there's a solution out there, though. I think this is something. Uh, um, you know, I, I was talking about this with Pat Williams, the old the old uh, uh, Sixers GM, uh, uh, about about a year ago, and he was talking about how uh, you know the Sixers might have wound up with Michael Jordan had uh, I believe it was the uh, the Rockets uh, wound up tanking and 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 that bumped them out. It, it really um, they wind up with Charles Barkley, of course, but uh, but they thought they were getting Michael Jordan. Uh, so you know that's that's tanking back in 1984. Four. It's as old as the game. I, I just I don't know if there's anything you could do about it. Uh, Sean Devaney's with us here. The NBA season got back underway last night. Um, when you look at the East, too, um, you got that Toronto at the top of the list here. The last couple of years, they've been in the mix, but nobody really believed in them. Is it time this time around to take them serious? Well, I, I think I've got – all right, I, I would say there's three reasons to take them serious. One is uh, they've, they've changed their offense. There's, you know, that's, that's been the thing that's, that's, that's been talked about is that, uh, uh, you know, they used to be pick and roll for DeRozan, pick and roll for Lowry, uh, and then basically just, uh, just alternate. Uh, they've, they've gone to a much more ball-sharing offense, and, and that you can really see the benefit of that. They've been a much better uh, offensive team. Uh, so there's that. The defense has been much better uh, as well. So you know, overall, they've improved. Uh, I think from an X's and O's standpoint. Uh, the other thing is the bench. You know, the bench has been really terrific. Uh, a lot of young guys, and and when you talk to Dwayne Casey about it, he'll he'll be quick to point that out. That that yes, we're playing well, but we're we're we're, we're counting on a lot of guys who are 24, 25, and we don't know what to expect. Uh, but that bench, when when the, right now they have been the best bench uh, uh, in the league. Uh, so you've got that, and then the third thing is is that you know look around at the competition. Boston really has seemed to hit a wall. I think you could see that coming as much as they were relying on young guys like Tatum uh, and Jalen Brown, uh, and uh, you know they, they they were a a thin team to begin with, and and I think that's catching up with them. So uh, you know we, we talked about Cleveland and, and and sort of the ups and downs and not not knowing what to expect from them. Uh, so yeah, I mean I think that 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 you have to take Toronto seriously. Uh, and and I'd wrap it into all three of those reasons. 
Hey, Sean, is Boston, you talked about them a minute ago. They've lost three in a row. They're just 500 over the last 10. What do you think's going on with the Celtics there? Are they vulnerable come playoff time? Because many didn't buy into them last year. Can we buy into them this year? Yeah, I, I think they're definitely vulnerable. Uh, and, and, you know, Brad Stevens said that the last game they played before – uh, before the All Star, they lost to the Clippers. And after the game, he said, "Look, uh, you know, we 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 weren't as good as we looked when we were winning 16 in a row. We we were playing above our heads, uh, and we haven't been we we aren't as bad as we've looked lately as they've been, uh, you know, losing these games. But 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 we weren't ever that." good uh and i think he's right you know i I think like i said they've really just relied an awful lot uh on young guys and 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 you had to figure that was going to catch up with them uh they don't have depth uh and that has caught up with them uh i I think they'll rally i think they'll bring it together and 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 they'll be a better team we'll see there's still an outside chance gordon hayward will will play we'll see i i would say if by this time next month uh, he's not uh, ready to take the floor. We won't see him, but but there's a chance that they get him back, and of course that adds some depth. So uh, you know, they're, they're, I think that they'll they'll right the ship a bit. Uh, but uh, but but no question that they are a vulnerable team. John Devaney, NBA writer from the Sporting News here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline, as we're looking at the East. Uh, how many teams in the East do you think can make it to the finals? I you know. I, I, I would say just the three. You know, I, 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 I don't think the Sixers are ready. I don't think that they have the depth. Uh, and, and, you know, Milwaukee, I, I, I don't, you know, believe much. And they played better since they fired Jason Kidd. But, uh, but you know, I don't, I don't think that's a finals team. Uh, I think Boston does have a chance. I do think, like I said, they'll, they'll, they'll pull it together uh, down the stretch and, and, and play better. They'll get Marcus Smart back and all that sort of stuff. So I, I think Boston has a chance. Cleveland, any, any team with LeBron. Uh, you know, is, is, is going to have a chance and it's probably ought to be the favorite. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Toronto for the reasons that I said. So I, I think there's probably three. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, Washington last year, um, a lot of people, um, you know, thought they might have given Cleveland a better matchup had they made it. I wasn't one of those people, but uh, they're the four seed currently. you got the Pacers, Bucks, Sixers, and Heat. Um, you know, and, and I think a lot of people would agree with Philly on the shortness of that uh, on the bench. They just don't have the depth yet. But, man, those two kids, Embiid and Simmons, uh, what an effort they put together last night. 62 points, 20 rebounds. And I would not want to see them in the playoffs because, you know, you've got the situation, of course, especially in the first round uh, where, you know, you play a game and you might not play for, you know, for three days. So, you know, I mean, with, with Embiid, if you, if you have your game spaced out like that, uh, you know that's that's dangerous, and and you look at the East, and uh, you know who guards them. You know, I mean, if you look at uh, uh, Toronto or, or or Boston, I think you've got a real problem in in, in trying to slow that guy down. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's I, like I said, I I don't think that they have that that that, that they're quite ready to take that step. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I don't think there's any teams uh, uh, of the uh, of the more experienced teams that want to see the Sixers in the postseason. John, we saw a guy like Marco Bellin. Nelly come to the Sixers is and Mike and I have talked about at one point in time Philly wasn't a place where it was like a destination place to go is Philadelphia now a free agent destination this summer do you think free agents will want to come to Philly this summer yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any question that, uh, that you know, the guys who want to play for a team that's sort of on the upswing uh, and, 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 and want to sort of uh, rejuvenate their careers if they're later on in, in, in their careers, uh, then, uh, uh, then yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think that that's something uh, uh, that, that they've now got something to sell. Uh, and that, uh, that that was tough going, obviously, for a few years there. But, but I, you know, obviously, they, they thought all along they'd get to this point. Uh, you know, you've got to be careful now, and I think they have. They, they, they haven't done, uh, uh, you know, much foolish in terms, of, uh, uh, in terms of what they've done on free agency. I think that'll continue. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, but, yeah, I think that, that it's, a, it's, it's certainly a place that uh, uh, if you're a free agent, you're going to be uh, you're going to have them at the top of your list. Could that include a LeBron James level of player or perhaps the king himself? You know, I, I I I really doubt it. I really doubt it. And and you know, I know Mike's been asking me that for. Uh, uh, That's like why you let me now. ask it this time. Yes, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he it. thought That's it would right, come right. from a different voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I just I I don't look. I think in the end, 
uh, he's going to go somewhere where it's it's a lifestyle choice uh, and where he's comfortable is uh, in Ohio uh, and in L.A. And, and you know, I think he's got, obviously, the house in L.A. Uh, I think he might have bought another house in L.A. Um, he wants to be part of the movie industry. He's, he's already, you know, into the entertainment industry. So uh, I think it's going to come down to either uh, uh, Cleveland uh, uh, or, or pulling uh, together with Paul George uh, and going to L.A., although I think that's, that, that seems to be getting more and more a long shot. Uh, Sean Devetti from the Sporting News is power rankings. You have the Rockets at the top. Does that mean that if the Rockets and Warriors meet, you like the Rockets to win that series? No, I mean <laughs> if they, it means if they meet, if they meet, if they were to meet over the weekend, I think the Rockets would have a good chance of winning. But I think when you get to the playoffs. I think it's going to be a different story. You know, I just think that uh, uh, the Warriors have been in what, what you'd have to call sort of a natural slump. You, you know, that, that that three years in a row to the finals and, and, and you get to this point and, uh, you know, it's it's the dead of February. You're waiting for the All-Star break to come. And, and uh, you know, they, they went, what it was, a four and four, I think, in their last eight. Uh, you know, not playing very good defense, turning the ball over something like 18 times a game, uh, you know, just careless play. Uh, and I think that just happens to a team when you get to, uh, uh, you know, when you're used to going to the finals and, and, and you're trying to get through the, uh, the drudgery of, of, of going through games uh, uh, in, in late January and early February. So uh, I would expect that uh, by the end of the year we'll see uh, uh, sort of the Warriors that we've, uh, uh, that we've come to know uh, and, and and some come to love and and some don't love so much. <laughs> hey, Sean, we saw um, the Patriots lose in the Super Bowl. The NBA version is the Spurs, I would guess. Is is uh, there's starting to be some cracks over there? What's going on in San Antonio? They've lost three in a row. Uh, they were, they're only four and six in their last ten. They got the Kawhi Leonard stuff. I mean, uh, is this becoming the end of the Spurs run? It's it's different. I mean, there's no question that that you know if you're Greg Popovich, I think you've got to be sitting there wondering, uh, you know, what the heck is going on here, uh, because for you know 20 years he's had star player. You know, they've won 50 games. Think about that. They've won 50 games every year going back to '96, '97. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, and the reason that he's been able to do it is because he has you know star players who he's able to rely on, and he knows. Uh, what what he's going to get out of them, and 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 they're good in the locker room, and and uh, uh, they set good examples. Uh, Tim Duncan, uh, Manu Ginobili, uh, David Robinson before those guys. Uh, so so he's always sort of had that. Uh, now he's got this thing with Kawhi Leonard, and 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 they're not on the same page. The organization's not on the same page uh, with its star player. Uh, he's got this injury, and it's been mysterious. And the team uh, seems to think he could be playing. He he is not playing. Uh, so you know you have this 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 departure from everything we've always seen with the Spurs. And I th- I think if you're Greg Popovich, you're scratching your head and saying, you know, what's what's going on here? Uh, don't forget, over the summer they they nearly traded Lamarcus Aldridge because because uh, he wasn't happy in San Antonio. Uh, so you know, this is it's it's a completely different thing. It'll be interesting to see how Popovich handles it because you know he's he, he's had a good bit of luck in terms of who he's been coaching over the years. Can he handle uh, this level of adversity coming from within his own locker room? Yeah, uh, a couple things on the West with Sean Devaney here. Um, you got the Spurs at three, Minnesota's tied with them at four, Oklahoma City five. Some people think that it's Oklahoma City. Yes, they haven't had the best um, regular season here, but they're starting to play better. They do have the three big guns. Are they a wild card that teams don't want to play in the West? I can tell you that I've talked to people with the Warriors, and and that is absolutely right. That they do not want to see them. Uh, they've had two matchups with uh, uh, with Oklahoma City this year, and, and Oklahoma City handled them both times pretty well. Uh, they'll play again, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, I, I know the Warriors don't want to see them. Uh, and, and and you're right. You know, I mean, they've they've been inconsistent, uh, but they played pretty good defense throughout. And if you can play three pretty good defense, and you've got those three guys uh, who can pop up and 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 put thirty on you uh, on any given night, you know that all of a sudden, you know that's that's a dangerous team. And and so even though they've struggled and they've lost some games that are uh, that have been strange, they've been inconsistent. Uh, you know, wild card I think is the right the, the right kind of word. Uh, you know, that's a team that could flame out uh, with with a sweep in the in the first round, or you could look up and see them in the in the Western Conference Finals. It's just uh, it's hard to know what to expect from them. All right, uh, the NBA season back in full swing tomorrow night. Sixers 
and Magic, 5 o'clock right here on 97.3 ESPN, followed by that Oklahoma City Golden State game at 8. Sean Devinney from the Sporting News, kind enough to join us, longtime NBA writer. Check out his power rankings at Sean Devaney on Twitter. Sean, always a pleasure, pal. All right, guys, thank you.